Bonjour. Ciao. Ohayo gozaimasu. Guten Morgen. Yes. Hey everyone, welcome to church at home. Yes. Be hello. And if it's your first uh, time, welcome. In the, yes, in your own, whatever language you want. Could be space person language. Oh. International Space Station, if you've got a language, <laughs> hit me up. I'd love, to, I'd love to learn all of it. He's crazy. Make sure you make yourself known in the comments if it is your first time. Uh, so that we know that you're there so that we can say a big hello yes. because we do love meeting new people uh, and we'd love to meet you. Yes, and we definitely would. So please leave a comment. And hey, if you're keen to check out um, and connect a bit further into this community, yep. we have a lot going on we at do. the moment. So, so much going we've on. We've got life groups where small groups of people meet together in people's homes. Yes, so we awesome. have an active ministry where you can get moving with us. Sure. Uh, we have an awesome youth ministry for our fantastic young people on yeah. Friday nights. YA. Yes, we also have YA, our young adults, are meeting mm. up for a worship night in a few weeks. So you should check that out. Do it. You can check that out by clicking the link in the description to connect with us or download the app to see all the things happening around the place yep. so you can join us. That's me on my phone. You busy downloading the app? Downloading. Hope that's all app of you. App connected. That's Good. Right. Yeah. Good job. Hey, uh, well, one thing we do love to do in this church is to pray for each other. Mm. Uh, we get heaps of prayer requests submitted uh, throughout the week. Uh, people asking for prayer for all sorts of different situations. Yep. Good, bad, mediocre, all of it. And we love being able to pray for all of them. So mm. uh, how can we pray for you this week? Have a think. I'll give you like two seconds to think of like a one sentence what we could pray for you about. You got it? All right, now, now you have your praise point. All you're going to do is go to the prayer link and yep. you can request a call or you can just like submit it mm -hmm. and then we can pray for it without a call because I know how some people feel about like getting a number coming. It's like, oh, I'm going to wait for that to ring mm -hmm. out. If that's you, don't we'll worry. We'll pray for you in the way you like True. to be prayed for. But so you feel the main thing is, whatever it is that came into your head, let us pray for you yes. and with you this week. I love that. So good. And we love being generous here as a church. It's who we are and it's our joy. Uh, Pastor Rick shared his heart on giving recently. Let's check it out. Good morning. Giving is essentially an act of faith for it shows that we trust in God as our provider. Jesus reimagined giving as generosity. And in so doing, he changed giving from being about us to being about others, from being about an amount to being an attitude and from a religious practice to a step of faith. Now, followers of Jesus know we can be generous because God is generous to us in every way. Generosity is indeed the key that unlocks the more of God. So at Gateway Church, what is our need right now? Well, two things. First, to increase our regular offerings. And secondly, for lump sum donations. Now, our offerings have declined a bit during COVID times, so we need to increase our offerings by about 5,000 a week. We also have a goal to buy the factory next door for church at home, online ministries, for use by our youth group, young adults, active ministry, for the winter night shelter for the homeless, and so much more. We already have half the money saved up, but we still need $250,000 more. We can achieve these goals if we all work together and if we all contribute something. We're asking our faithful givers to press in to give more. And we're also asking those who don't regularly give to do something to just make a start on that journey. If you already give, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. But would you pray earnestly about how to increase your giving, even by a small amount? If you know God has blessed you, can you also pray to give a donation towards the factory? Maybe you've never thought about giving. Maybe it seems overwhelming to talk about such big numbers. Would you pray earnestly today about how to begin your giving journey? Giving even in a small way will sow seeds of faith into your life as well. The Bible confirms, God who takes care of me will also supply all your needs 
from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Gateway, let's get involved in what God is blessing and be generous. Please reach out to us if you'd like more advice or more information. That was so good, Rick. If you'd like to contribute, head to our app or use the details provided below. Yes. What a morning we have in store for you, 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 and you. Mark is bringing us the word today, continuing our series, Let Your Yes Be Your Yes. But first, let's worship. Let's get, get amongst it. chase surrender all and I rest in grace no need to worry when I can choose to praise I find my peace when I call out your name even to while this
Hi, my name's Mark and welcome to Gateways Let Your Yes Be Yes series. Last week, um, Pastor Singe, one of our great younger leaders, taught us about integrity and he looked at Daniel. So he had Daniel part one and he spoke about integrity, how it is personal but never private. And Singe went on to say, eventually people will see the path you have chosen. So this week I'm going with Daniel part two and focusing on uh, integrity and we're going to look at what does a win look like for you. Let me give you context in case you missed uh, Singer's great message last week. Daniel was a young Israelite man from a background of nobility and wealth who was captured by the fearsome Babylonians along with other young Israelite males of similar background. They were all press ganged uh, across to Babylon because they were seen as young men of promise whom the conquering Babylonians could, thought could be of use in government service to their new king. Daniel eventually rose to become one of the only three administrators who has authority over all the provincial governments throughout the kingdom. Now, for me, this remarkable Daniel stands out as one of the only major figures in the Bible to produce a completely positive record of his actions. So let's focus on Daniel chapter 6 and see what happened to Daniel when he puts his loyalty to his God to the ultimate test. King Darius reorganized his kingdom. He appointed 120 governors to minister, administer all over the parts of his realm. Over them were three vice regents, one of whom was Daniel. The governors reported to the vice regents who made sure that everything was in order for the king. But Daniel, brimming with spirit and intelligence, so completely outclassed the other vice regents and governors that the king decided to put him in charge of all of the kingdom, the whole kingdom. The vice regents and the governors got together to find some old scandal or skeleton in Daniel's life, sounds like politics, doesn't it? That they could use against him, but they couldn't dig up anything. He was totally exemplary and trustworthy. They could find no evidence of negligence or misconduct. So they finally gave up and said, we're never going to find anything against this Daniel unless we can scheme up something religious. The vice regents and governors conspired together and then went to the king and said, King Darius, live forever. We've conver converted, convened your vice regents, governors, and all your leading officials, and have agreed that the king should issue the following decree. For the next 30 days, no one is to pray to any god or mortal except you, O king. Anyone who disobeys will be thrown into the lion's den. Issue this decree, O king, and make it unconditional, as if written in stone like all the laws of the Medes and the Persians. King Darius signed the decree. When Daniel learned that the decree had been signed and posted, he continued to pray, just as he had always done. His house had windows in the upstairs that opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he knelt there in prayer, thanking and praising his God. The conspirators came and found him praying, asking God for help. They went straight to the king and reminded him of the royal decree that he had signed. Did you not, they said, sign a decree forbidding anyone to pray to uh, any god or man except you for the next 30 days? And anyone caught doing it would be thrown into the lion's den? Absolutely, said the king written in stone, like all the laws of the Medes and the Persians. Then they said, Daniel, one of the Jewish exiles, ignores you, O king, and defies your decree. Three times a day, he prays. What's jumped out at me in that passage there is how Daniel stuck to his integrity of following his God, knowing full well what the decree's punishment was for non-compliance. He'd served two Babylonian kings loyally for 55 years from when he was a young man 
and his remarkable effectiveness was built on his rock-solid integrity. Daniel had thrived because he focused on ensuring that his yes be yes in all matters, including loyalty to his God. But his attitude of ensuring his yes be yes in his faith walk with his God was about to send him into a very dark and traumatic situation. But he would not back down or compromise. Every couple of years, I have um, the fun, the pleasure, the enjoyment of, of telling emerging leaders that they have to jump out of a plane. And between you and me, to my surprise, they do. And in the build-up to it, uh, tell them many, many months prior, they, they save their money um, and their expectations are built up and they're nervous and they're facing all their inner fears and so on. And so when the day comes, they're really uh, on edge to do this jump that they've committed to because they've paid a lot of money to do it. And what I do is I promise them that they will have an incredible experience. It'll be a life-changing experience, something they've never experienced before. And that does happen. Of course, when they land, uh, some of them cry, some of them hug, they laugh, uh, tears of joy, laughter, fun, backslapping because they have experienced something incredible. But between you and me, I never promise them that they will land safely. That's out of my pay grade. I just tell them I've got to do it. You see, their win was in committing to the jump. Landing safely was a bonus. You know, we lost some, we win some, we roll on. Calm down, you parents out there with emerging young leaders. Now, Daniel had a huge win. Even though his punishment was about to be rolled out, Daniel could still stare down the worst threats and impending punishment because he was a man of tested faith who always focused on his yes being yes regarding his unchanging obedience to his God. Reminds me in Proverbs, a key verse for this series is how the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. So how do you build up your integrity muscle to a point where you let your yes be yes, regardless of the win-loss scenario, regardless of the scoreboard result at the end? How do you score a win like Daniel, even though you know it's going to cost you big time? How do you muscle up to that consistent level of faith and integrity? Well, let me explain to you how that happens. It's a very simple step to build your integrity muscle, but it's difficult to do. You simply start out responding well to all the little yes situations that come up in your life. So you practice your integrity on letting your yes be yes on the small things. For example, I will turn up on time. I will put the bins out, Sally. I will remember to get some shopping. I will pay my taxes, and so on. What that's doing is building up your, your spiritual muscles so that as you get to the point where the big issue comes, you've been building your muscles along the way with all these little guesses so that when you get to have to face a big integrity issue, you're able to respond with, my yes is my yes, because you've built the spiritual muscle through the integrity pathway to handle that big issue. And when you've climbed over that big issue, you go back to continuing building itself up with the little yeses along the way. Yes, I will do that overtime work for you. Yes, I'll remember the birthday. Whatever it is that you are saying, you commit a yes to it and build up for the next um, big issue that will come your way. You see, the small yeses count. Integrity is built over a long, long, long time of rigorous attention of ensuring you let your yes be yes, regardless of the potential downside. So I said, simple step, hard to do. At each challenge, 
small or large. Let your yes be yes and leave the results up to God. Now, let me give you two tips. Everyone likes some free tips. So let me give you two very simple uh, tips for you. Here's two quick and simple ways to destroy your integrity. How's that for some good tips? Here's the first simple, quick and easy way to destroy your integrity. First step is choosing to go the wrong way. Choosing to go the wrong way. Uh, my wife Sally um, grew up playing uh, netball and when our uh, daughters were teenagers, they formed the basketball team. Sally got them all together and with some of their schoolmates and they put a team in the adult competition. And they were all excited and, and uh, couldn't wait for the first game in the next season to start. And um, they did a little bit of training. The best thing they ever did, the best thing, was they got the best coach going. They got a fantastic person to be their coach who's humble and, um, yeah, I was very honoured when they asked me, actually, to be their coach. So anyway, it comes to the first night, the first game. They're so excited. They all turn up. They pay their subs. They rush out onto the court and uh, they shake the ref's hands. They shake the opposition players' hands. Up goes the ball. You wouldn't credit it. Straight off the break, Sally gets the ball, drives down to the key and does an almighty Michael Jordan slam dunk down. Two points. All done. Now, I know some of you are smiling and laughing because you know my wife Sally is only five foot three. She thinks she's six foot three, but she's five foot three. So I just add a bit of colour there to get your attention. But she did get the ball off that break. She did drive down to the court, right into the key, put it up. It was two points. She's standing there doing a little victory dance and hopping around and doing everything. How good is she? And the bands come out and the trumpets are blowing and they released all the, all the streamers from the roof. It was just mayhem and she's just dancing around, having an absolute delight with herself. She was so into the celebrating that she didn't hear her coach yelling at her and she didn't notice that the players, both her players and the opposition players, were still in the centre of the court. And finally, when she stopped doing a victory jig and everything, she could hear the coach yelling out, Sally, Sally, you went the wrong way. You've put it in the opposition's net. And she looked up at the scoreboard and sure enough, there were two points in the opposition's score. So um, the funny thing is, in that 10 seconds as it all happened for her and in the victory dance of three minutes, it felt great. But it wasn't right. As our sins pointed out to us last week, direction, not intention, determines our destination. Direction, not intention, determines our destination. So let me throw a question at you. I know you're currently facing a let my yes be yes issue, whether it's small or large. How do I know that? Because you're a human. You live in a Monday to Friday world like I do. So I know there's something you'll be facing. My question to you is, which way are you going to choose? What is your God saying to you? So the first way um, is to go choose to go the wrong way. That's going to wreck your integrity if you get that wrong. Here's the second quick and easy, simple way to go to wreck your integrity. Being led the wrong way. Being led the wrong way. Uh, above my head in my office, I've got uh, an authentic um, bullnose ring. Yes, I've been to Spain. And uh, this authentic bullnose ring uh, goes on the bull's nose. It's very simple. You just sneak up to the bull when it's not looking and you just bang that through its nose. No problem. And you shut it, put the chain on, shut it. The bull's happy. You're happy. And you just lead along on the chain. I leave that up near my head in my office to remind me when I'm asked to do things, or I'm, I'm involved in a whole lot of things and think about, well, who's, who, who's yanking my chain? Who's, am I doing this for the right reasons? Am I being uh, drawn into something that's a waste of time and energy? And am I after status? Am I after an applause? What am I doing? And, and it keeps me there to think about who's pulling me. 
So my question to you is this, who's pulling your nose ring? Who's yanking your chain? At the very least, work out who's setting your direction. Because often, it's not you. You just haven't paused to work it out yet. Could be Hollywood. You know, they like to colonise between our ears and get us looking at a whole lot of different things. It could be peer pressure. It could be workplace uh, unhealthy issues. It could be family of origin stuff. A whole range of things can be yanking on your chain and take you in a direction, but you've never actually paused to think, well, who is yanking on into my chain? So they're two very simple and quick ways to wreck your integrity if you don't be aware of them and work them out. So what does happen to Daniel? You know, most people would know what happens to Daniel with the lion's den and so, but let's, let's dig into that last bit of chapter six and follow it through and see what we get out of it. The king caved in and ordered Daniel brought and thrown into the lion's den. But he said to Daniel, because he was so fond of him, he said, your God, to whom you are so loyal, is going to get you out of this. A stone slab was placed over the opening of the den. The king sealed the cover with his signet ring and the signet rings of all of his nobles, fixing Daniel's fate. The king went back to the palace and he, he was really fond of Daniel. He was so upset he refused supper, he, he couldn't sleep, he spent the night fasting, he watched Netflix to distract himself. And at daybreak, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. As he approached the den, he hadn't even got there yet, he called out anxiously, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve so loyally, saved you from the lions? And Daniel shouts back, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel who closed the mouths of the lions so that they would not hurt me. I've been found innocent before God and also before you, O king. I've done nothing to harm you. When the king heard these words, he was happy. He ordered Daniel taken up out of the den. When he was hauled up, there wasn't a scratch on him. He trusted his God. So it's like a good ending of a great movie. But, 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 sometimes when you let your yes be yes, and you respond with integrity and faith, you may still end up paying a huge price. Remember, your win is always in the doing of those small, little, seemingly inconsequential yeses that builds up your integrity muscles. Leave the outcome up to your God. If I get the opportunity to tell you to jump out of a plane, the experience will be amazing, I promise you that but I can't promise that you'll land safely. But, 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 if you live a life with some spiritual muscle and you let your yes be yes in the small and large things, here's three outcomes that I promise you will experience. The first thing experience you'll have, I promise, will happen to you is some people in your Monday to Friday world will award you with credibility. Credibility is being trusted and believed. You'll receive credibility that is ongoing. The second thing I promise you, if you have your integrity lined up right, is some people in your Monday to Friday world will place their confidence in you. Confidence is when you rely on someone else. They will place their confidence in you that is ongoing. And thirdly, I promise you'll experience this. Some people in your Monday to Friday world will confide in you. 
people confide in people they trust, they entrust you with their precious inner thoughts because they've been watching your lifestyle. You end up being confided in and it's ongoing. You know, integrity. Let your yes be yes. That's your win, regardless of the outcome. Build your integrity muscle through the spiritual practice of responding to the small yeses that set you up for a big win when the big issues come your way, which they will. You know, this week I pray that you have many big wins this week in your Monday to Friday world. See you again. You were the word at the beginning The one with God the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you I'll cry
So, so good. How, how do we get to the point where we can say yes, even when it costs us, or no, even when it costs us? Yeah. Like it's practicing integrity in all of the little decisions. Uh, it's it's all the little things that we can overlook along the way that make all the difference. Yeah, and that's so encouraging that, mm. you know, I can start small and build up. It's all the little wins. Yeah, love it. Don't forget to follow us on socials. Download the app, do a little dance. No, 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 no. And we'll see you all next Sunday at 10 a.m. for Church Take at Home. <laughs>